What is up guys, your boy Gonzo and welcome back to a new video. I know, long time no see. Anyways, here's the big breakdown of the track called Icicle. Let's jump into it. As you can see, the project is kinda big, but not really. And as per usual, we're gonna start from the top and go all the way down. Let's begin. So for the melodies, I actually found a pack on Reddit for free because I didn't want to make melodies. And it's from Prod by Ango. If you guys want to get the same melodies, I don't know, you can get them on Reddit, I guess. But this is how the melodies sound like. And I'm pretty sure they are actually meant for drill. This is not drill, but it works. Then of course, for the switch up, I did the thing with shaper box because it's easy. <laughs> easy melody. That's about it with the melodies. And as for the boss, I do have some EQing going on, a reverb and a sidechain because I wanted the kicks to hit a bit harder. And you'll see which kick I use in a second. If I'm not mistaken, all of the drums and stuff come from my drum kits. Yeah, they do. Self plug. If you want to get all of my drum kits, you still have the time until the end of the year to get all of them for 80% off. The discount is automatically applied at checkout. So yeah. Also, for some reason, this is in melodies. It's not actually a melody whoops but let's head over to the vocals so the acapella is from roddy rich and i basically looked on youtube for 130 bpm acapellas and i found this one so i used this one <laughs> now normally it does sound a bit different like this is how it sounds like in the track and without anything on it like no effects it sounds like this you might be asking yourself how did i do the stuttery sound because i'm pretty sure the original song doesn't sound like this since i'm using ableton there's this cool thing called warping and uh, if you're using the beats warp type i guess and stick to the transients you can use this little arrow and then change the uh, transient size i guess normally it sounds like this i just been balling out here season oh some niggas i left in the bleach I mean, it's pitched up one semitone, but you know, it sounds like a normal vocal track. You can make it even more stuttery. I just been balling out there, season, knowing some niggas I left in the bleach. And you can kind of use it like some sort of perk at some point, like you can just pull it down all the way to like 10 or something. But I still wanted to, to have it sound like vocal, so 65 was probably the best amount. Now, I duplicated it twice so I can pitch it up one octave and then pitch it down one octave. This is the low one. Then for the high dub, it's basically the same thing, just one octave higher. You know, Alvin the Chipmunk. Uh, but together... And now all of the vocals... I just been balling out here, season, know some niggas I left in the bleach. This is like really dubstep kind of vocals, I guess, like a lot of processing going on. And uh, I don't know, it sounds really good with like the whole track. Granted, I did get lazy and I used the entire thing. I didn't stop it at, at certain points and stuff because I did make this track in like two hours. But anyways, that's it with the vocals. Then going on to the bass, baby. So we do have 1808, which is duplicated just to give it some higher frequencies. The 808 sounds like this normally. go boom you know we do have some chorus on it and obviously we have nani use code gunso 10 for 10 percent discount whatever <laughs> and then the higher 808 sounds like this it's the exact same thing just one octave higher and it does have like 100 chorus just because i wanted it to be wide and i wanted it to sound different than just it being one octave higher if that makes sense that's about it for the main 808 then we do have some 808 slides i didn't want to go too crazy with them so they're they only come in like three times in the whole song really simple i didn't really want to do much with them and then we have a plug 808 because i love plug 808s but this one specifically here has a wacky band pass and some reverb but the actual 808 starts here like it hits And here we have a combo of sorts with the high 808 and the plug and i had no idea this was here so yeah i guess i'm learning this too now i heard 
it in the song i just never realized these two were together yeah <laughs> and that's it with the plug 808 so it's the same chain same nani same i guess bass eq kind of tweaked some slight chorus and that's about it now for the kicks it's probably my most used kick when it comes to these kind of tracks it's a rather simple kick at first it doesn't really hit hard it's like i mean it kind of hits hard but it's more subby than everything boosted it by like six decibels and that's it this is the kick and then i stacked it with a stomp but only at certain times not throughout the whole track as you can see more where uh, an impact kind of is needed if that makes sense so the very first kick hit has one and yeah of course reversed kick but as i was saying and then we have snares classic and it's combined with a clap and then we have a another snare which is very quiet for some reason. See, that's why it's quiet and you can't hear it in the song, because I started the automation here. This video proves that I'm a dumbass and I'm way out of my hand right now because I haven't produced like this in a while. So what should have happened was basically this. There we go. Then every second snare is combined with this thing, whatever thing is this, I don't know. And that's it with the snares. Then for the hi-hats, we do have a simple two-step pattern and every hi-hat hit is turned down. So it gives it a swing effect like a... And then the second time the hi-hat comes in, it's way more spaced out just so it'll work better with the uh, plug-808. I'm just gonna play the snare so you can actually get the idea. And there's also the third hi-hat, which is a hi-hat roll, so... Then we have some drum fills. Then we have a crash with a lot of reverb. This snare fill. Then we have a different fill, I guess, uh, as the pre-drop fill. And then the very last thing that I've added throughout the track was this raining. The intro felt kind of empty without it, not gonna lie. So it sounds like this. Like this is what it sounded like up until the very last few minutes. But then I added a rain. And suddenly it feels good. Like it, it you know, it kind of brings you in. Like you hear the ambience and like, oh, okay. So I can imagine looking out the window kind of thing while listening to the track. I don't fucking know what I'm saying. It works. Then I've also decided to add it throughout the whole thing. And uh, I think there is a different EQ. Yeah, I took that out so it wouldn't clash. You didn't really hear it. You just kind of hear it, which is perfect. And as for the outro, which I'm currently abusing, it's basically, right? So you have the track. I, I basically took a random section uh, with the drums. Just like eight bars. The secret is no warping enabled. Just pitch it down three semitones. That's the easiest thing to do. And now. This makes pretty much every single song sound better for a switch up. I swear to dog. That's why I love using it. But yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I do know that you guys like when I do a deep dive in my tracks, I guess. But anyways, as I said in the video, you can get all of my drum kits for 80% off. Like imagine wanting to buy the XXL kit, which is normally 40. You can get it for $8. That's fucking insane. And many other things. Anyways, it was boy gone. So I don't know if we'll see each other this year. In case we don't, I hope you had a decent 2021 and hopefully you'll have an even better 2022. Honestly, i'm hoping that i will anyways i'll see you guys next year probably i guess see you in the next one peace 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 it's an airsoft gun come on